The conservatives have released a new ad. Who is Pierre Polyev? Many know him as the common sense leader the country needs. His children know him in Francais, Espanol, and English as Papa. And I know him as a guy who loves me for who I am, a Canadian who came to call Canada home, and his wife. Now, that's part of the ad that's one of three that will air on TV, part of a $3 million print and media buy that launches today. The partner certainly has money to spend. Fundraising numbers show the Tories have taken in more than $16 million in the first half of this year, and that's more than double what the Liberals have fundraised at $6.8 million. So is this ad the beginning of an expensive air campaign? The power panel back with me now, Jason Markusoff, Francoise Boivin, Shakir Chambers, and Michelle Cadario. And Michelle, I'm going to begin with you. What do you think of the ad in terms of uh, whether it's effective? And also, what do you make of its timing, Michelle? Well, I think it's a great ad. Um, and, uh, it, you know, they have oodles of cash, as you said. Um, and let's be honest, they, it, he is a leader who's not very well known. And yet his, his unfavorables are sky high. And, you know, they're having time, trouble finding women and swing voters who are going to swing back to him. And so, you know, this fuzzy kind of softening of the edges and uh, making him a warm and cuddly guy is, um, you know, and they've got the money to push behind it. Let's, let's make a go of it. The thing that they have to do, though, is maintain that because, you know, action has to match what they're showing. And I'd be surprised if uh, he's going to be changing his attitude on a whole host of issues. So let's see who he is when he comes back in September. Is he the soft, cuddly guy now? Francoise, to you, because, again, uh, sources have told CBC News this is meant to reintroduce voters to Pierre Poilievre. What do you think in terms of its impact, potentially? I think it humanizes uh, the, the person, because for a lot of people, when you say uh, Pierre Poilievre's name, uh, they think pit bull, they think uh, the guy to, that goes to the jugular, uh, the guy who was doing the job for Stephen Harper, uh, I mean, the guy you send to, to, to do the hitting. And that is not a great image to sway the uh, uh, middle of the road uh, voters, uh, the women, uh, the youth, and, and so on and so forth. I've said from the get-go when he got elected as chief of his party, uh, that night when his wife was on the stage, uh, it kind of humanized him. And I thought to myself, they should use her a bit more. So I think this is things that we will see a lot on the campaign trail. Uh, I don't think, though, uh, like Michelle says, that it will change his personality in the House. But he, they're betting that people are not necessarily uh, looking uh, uh, in the House of Commons uh, to, to, to make their, their, their decision. So uh, we'll see if, if it pays off, but he will have to work that way during the campaign. And we'll see whether other parties respond uh, with spending Good now. Yeah, Shakir, I know exactly. on, on power and, in the power panel previously, you've talked about fundraising versus vote efficacy. And the Conservatives certainly raised more money in the last two campaigns. They won the popular vote but did not win enough seats to form government. But when you look at these numbers, more than $16 million in the first half, more than double what the Liberals have raised, could there be some sort of tipping point with these numbers in your view? Yeah, I think this is the Conservatives typically are raised their, their federal uh, political rivals. So this is no surprise. And Pierre himself is a, is a fundraising juggernaut. Even during the leadership campaign, I think him as an individual, there was a phase where he outraised the federal parties on his own. So this is not surprising. I think when I look at these numbers, uh, what's promising is that they're doing well in Ontario in the GTA, uh, where they need to win those seats to, to form government. Uh, they're doing well in Markham, Brampton, Mississauga. But what's concerning is they're still not doing well in Quebec. And I think if you have hopes of forming a majority government, you need to pick up some seats in Quebec. So we'll see how it plays out moving forward. But I think most folks on this panel would agree that fundraising numbers are not determining uh, the election outcome. Uh, it's good to have money in your pocket, but a lot more goes into it. And part of that is the branding we're seeing right now with changing his image and being a softer leader in hopes of winning over women, winning, winning over youth, and those kind of demographics you need to get over the hump. And Jason, building on what uh, Shakir was just saying, according to Eric Grenier, our colleague from the writ.ca, some of the other areas where it is of concern to conservative fundraisers, surging in some suburban areas, but down in urban centers, Toronto and Vancouver. What does that signal to you? 
Well, as long as they went up the suburbs, they don't need the, the cities proper. Uh, the Vancouver suburbs are, and the uh, Toronto suburbs are much larger than the uh, than the inner cities themselves. So as long as they, you know, uh, up their ante in uh, in the Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver suburbs, uh, it's minority potentially uh, majority territory. And the polls thus far uh, lately seem to be showing uh, that they are closing in a majority with a ten point uh, lead over the Liberal Party and the NDP. Uh, well back. Uh, and the fundraising, uh, the fundraising edge works in these ads. Um, what we haven't seen is liberal ads try to take down or uh, or define um, Polyev. Uh, we you know I think back to the uh, way that Harper's uh, conservatives successfully uh, boxed uh, boxed Ignatieff and Dion to a corner with past leader, liberal leaderships before Trudeau, um, and they spent to. Uh, for a, lot, for a lot of negative ads, and we just haven't seen that with the Liberals. I'm not sure that's a money shortage or if they just don't want to be seen as uh, nasty or aggressive or attacking. Um, but I I in the lane on their own, um, Conservatives are doing what they can to uh, shine at a positive light and uh, shave down at the edges, as uh, Michelle said, of their leader. And Michelle, just quickly, last few seconds to you, what do you see other parties having to do? This is $3 million long before a campaign declared. Do you see other parties having to start an air campaign at this early juncture? Well, it's early, and let's be honest, Pierre Polyrev was doing all of our work for us, driving up his own negatives. So, you know, why get in the way of that? And so I think now we wait and see if this works, you know, if he can, if he kind of has a brand new image. And, and then uh, I would suspect that there might be a response a little bit later down the road. Um, they've always out, out fundraised the Liberals. Um, they're very good at it. Uh, it uh, hats off to all of them. But, um, you know, that doesn't drive through his elections, as Shakir said. Michelle Cadario, Shakir Chambers, Francois Boisin, uh, sorry, Francois Boivin, Jason Markisoff. What a pleasure to speak to you all. Thank you for the time today on the Power Panel. Really appreciated all of your perspectives. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. And thank you for watching Power and Politics on this Tuesday. Stay with us on CBC News Network. Much more of your news right here.